Next up are two guests uh, who traveled here from very far away, from Canada. And uh, the two speakers are Dominique Delandre from the University of Montreal and um, her colleague Maxime Goyer from the University of Quebec, Rimouski. And they will be talk, uh, talking about transcribers as a techno-social tool. And the social aspect, as I think has become abundantly clear by now, is very important to us as a cooperative. So the floor is yours. So both uh, of us are leading large research projects in partnership that derive directly from Transcribus and definitely uh, open, is opening the doors of uh, the ivory to towers to the citizens. Uh, today, we will show how Transcribus has become a, a true uh, social, techno-social tool. First, that will be my part, I will show you uh, how Transcribus and my two, the two partnerships that I have uh, called uh, Donner le goût de l'archive. Uh, wait a minute, here, no, it doesn't work, here. Oh, okay. Donner le goût de l'archive, with the give a taste of the archives. And the other partnership that derived from this one is, is called uh, the making of Montreal uh, history. Um, and these two partnerships has uh, created the exchange uh, um, and uh, uh, spaces of sociability between the academic museum and the citizen world. Then Maxim will present the achievement of Nouvelle France Numérique, which is here, um, and uh, uh, show uh, how, with the help of volunteer citizens, he has achieved a highly efficient HDR model and developed a modus operandi to link the academics and the citizens. What I do uh, oof, here. I'm trying to reconstruct the past uh, in this digital age uh, with my two big projects. And uh, it's um, gathering a lot of students, it's why I ask you the question, um, that are working for their own research, but work with us, we pay them. So it's a kind of scholarship. So um, uh, Transcribus is everywhere in my research, my teaching, the crowdsourcing and also what we call cultural mediation uh, aim at the general public, that is the whole world of the museums. Uh, my personal research uh, is Europe and America in the 16th and 18th century, the French space, the space especially, uh, so French, France and its colony, women and gender history, intersectionality history, imperium studies, and history of slaves, uh, slaveries, many slaveries. So uh, I came to Transcribus uh, because um, it was a, a, a problem of reading. Uh, I was looking for women in front of the justice. And as you can see, this was one of the first page of the first register in the judicial um, archives that uh, after all my years in the archives, I couldn't read. And what is very fun is that uh, finally we break, we broke the, the hand of uh, this uh, crazy writer uh, and uh, with the model. And uh, I discovered that the very first act in front of the justice in Montreal was led by a woman. So I couldn't read it at the beginning, but that's it. So I was very glad. Um, so, um, um, so what we try to do is um, uh, we are transcribing, we are creating models, but then we use the, uh, the, um, the, 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 the data that we found in the, our archives to do social history and to um, bring the student in history towards the, the every steps of the way towards the citizen. So, and you'll see how we'll do it. Um, our association with Transcribus 
uh, creates spaces of exchange and sociability between the academic and citizen world, but also it goes on to my dismay, uh, bigger and bigger, uh, it grows and diver diversifies in a kind of sprawling manners, uh, and it's uh, going on still. And I show you what is going on. <laughs> this is it. Um, <clears throat> so, as I told you, I'm going through uh, from the, uh, the traces that we find all the details and everything in the archives to cultural mediation. So, in my two big projects that were founded by uh, our national uh, founding uh, society, or, I don't know, say CRSH, Shark, anyway. Um, uh, I'm, I'm doing my personal research, but I teach also. I have two, um, uh, three courses, actually. One uh, course is uh, the, at the BA level here, um, based on Transcribus and AI. Uh, also, uh, at the third level of the BA, I'm doing uh, inter uh, I supervise internship in, uh, in my partner, like the museum, the archives, uh, local archives also, so it's a, a, a good formation. So right now I have uh, people working in here in the notary archives, in religious archives, in the General Hospital of Montreal, uh, educational archives in La Congregation Notre Dame, inter internship, well, internship uh, doing um, translating uh, French indigenous dictionaries of the 18th and uh, 19th century. Uh, and they, this is a, a associations with uh, indigenous band councils. So it's very enriching. And uh, also uh, internship in archeology span because the traces that we find in our archives leads to archeological finds that are shown uh, after in the museum. So this is the teaching. And the transcribus is, of course, in the, at the core of it. And then this is the work that I'm do doing with my student, uh, a, a very big uh, student uh, group. And we are transcribing, uh, ni plus ni moins, all the, the archives uh, pertaining to Montreal. This is judiciary archives, the parish archives, the notary archives, the state archives, maps and plan, uh, and indigenous dictionaries. And um, we have uh, many uh, bases, unique um, bases, um, uh, uh, I have to say databases in uh, Quebec. One is called uh, Le Programme de Démographie Historique, uh, Historical Demographic Database, which allows us to retrace all the settlers from the very beginning of the colony in the 17th century to almost today. So you can, it's a uh, geneal genealogical way of doing things. So I'm just trying to find here. So you type the name uh, yesterday, uh, he was talking about somebody, very weird name, Prisque Soucy. So I went to this base and here he is, his wife, second marriage. And if I, I click on the first marriage, I will have all his children. And these children are do you see something? Do you see something? For a second, interrupt to put this small window away okay. because it's across okay. the titles. So, that's it. so this is a unique base, which is very uh, great. The other base is called uh, Adema. So this is why I was so interested by the project of uh, Günther, uh, because we, we take all these people that we found in the, uh, the archives and we go in Ademar and we can sh see where they lived. And uh, we can, uh, uh, with the, the, the mapping and geo-referencing, uh, geo how do you say geo referencing? It's a bit complicated for me to pronounce. Uh, we can trace where, for example, in my case, what I'm doing right now about slaves, where did the slaves, um, indigenous and black slaves, lived in Montreal? So, and <laughs> retracing them, it's huge. Um, <clears throat> so, I want to go back to my crazy thing. So, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. This is it. Sorry. Okay. So um, 
when we decided to work together with uh, uh, Maxim and others, uh, I decided to create what I call the permanent workshop of doc documentary analysis and crowdsourcing here. Uh, we, we call it La Pad l'atelier. At first, it was theory in the morning and practice transcribers in the afternoon. But then we realized that we really need formation. So we transform ourselves in ambassadors of transcribus among any kinds of uh, people touching the archives. So I have been the, uh, given a seminar to um, a formation, an introductory seminar to, uh, for example, the, uh, the National Indigenous Council. Uh, we have been in the um, uh, uh, among the national archives, of course, but even a novelist came to me to be able to uh, to, to um, uh, work with Transcribus. So it's we we discovered that we had uh, to dis diversify the uh, the workshop. So we do ad hoc. So people ask us, we go and uh, in Zoom or whatever, and then. Uh, we decided to do a summer school that will, we are, we are three university link, uh, a, a summer school that will alternate between our uh, uh, university, it's here. So uh, last year in June, last June, uh, it was in Rimouski, and uh, next year it will be in Montreal, so I invite you all to come, because we will talk about les gens de Montréal, the people of Montreal, and we have a specific there's a really a specific uh, um, scope on man management data, data management on the one hand, and crowdsourcing also, how we work. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, you see the, the public of this uh, summer school, uh, we, we tie uh, the summer school to a conference, AI, and we can reach uh, academics, uh, qualified uh, staff of the museum and, and etc., and general public. And then uh, that was the formation <laughs> up to bottom. And then we realized that, whoa, there was a lot coming back from the, the bottom. So uh, we, uh, I create, well, we, whoops, we create uh, the APAD the citizen science bottom up. So we have three level now transcription uh, because uh, that was asked so it's based on volunteer and students that want just to be there and transcribe and um, uh, we improve actually um, the, 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 the work of uh, transcribus doing this but also in my course the second level at the BA uh, 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 in the university, the results of the student were, it was a very new, brand new course, and the result was so good that I decided to bring seven of them to a big, the, the big conference in history in Quebec. But then they are in second year, so, uh, second uh, year um, uh, VA level, you know. So I decided to create an APAD history right now that is going on and we meet with this little group of people interested by transcription, paleographers, uh, genealogists and everything. And these people from the public, they listen to these new students, you know, they, they are new in the career and they are presenting their paper that, uh, so it's like a round, uh, how do you say, un galop d'essai for them. They, they try their finding on the people and will go in the end of October in front of the real big um, uh, history society. So it's um, a kind of um, scientific committee based on crowdsourcing and uh, historian and also the museologists that are there because they are in the second year of MA and they will take the finding of the historian and transform it into a virtual exposition, an exhibition, uh, um, a podcast, uh, archaeomatics, and everything. And for that, they will be formed during the winter about museology. And they will be uh, here. Um, um, everybody will be formed in this about museology next winter. So we will give all this, the, the product to the museum 
that will show them in 2024. So here it is, as you see, the many, the many, many um, link that we have done with uh, from transcribus from the very first paper that I show you the transcript to right now it's sprawling literally uh, uh, in the uh, in the uh, the world. As you see, Transcribus is at the center of the all these endeavors and proved to be a true techno-social tool, which bridge not only the academics and the non-academics, but also old and new generation of any kind interested in the making of history. And now I set la parole to my colleague. Thank you. Um, yeah, as Okay, yeah. As Dominique said, uh, we, we, we both lead a uh, major project in history uh, in Quebec. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, on my side, uh, I'm the director of uh, Nouvelle France Numérique, or Digital New France, if you prefer, uh, which is a research project that was launched in 2019 with. Uh, Dominique was too long, with funding from uh, Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. It unites dozens of researchers, including Dominique and all her uh, partners, uh, interested in new friends around the world and follows the objective of studying processes and networks of information flow by analyzing intertextuality in a manuscript document. To achieve this goal, the, the project aims to centralize all New Friends document transcriptions produced by several researchers in order to make these searchable and interoperable with textometric tools. Right from the start, Transcribus was the tool that made this project uh, realistic and possible and was our main centralizing platform, allowing us to work collaboratively. As we needed to get access to digital images of archives, uh, we also encourage establishment, establishing partnership between researchers and archive centers. So the archive centers became uh, totally part of the project. Um, and in the third uh, place, all this was designed to help us find philological links between documents, which was impossible up to now with archival materials. After three years, the project has achieved transcribing over, has transcribed, sorry, over uh, 100,000 pages, and it is now developing into a new partnership called Transcrire la Nouvelle France, or Transcribe New France. Building on the research, uh, on the results, sorry, of uh, Nouvelle France Numérique, uh, Transcrire la Nouvelle France aims to develop a public repository allowing to associate transcriptions to database through linked open data for archival description and named entities, and make all these transcriptions available to the public and researchers. It also seeks to uh, enable development of AI tools to enrich transcription and analyze documents. And finally, it aims to unite uh, documentary heritage dissemination with research data management. So uh, here is the link with our uh, summer school in data management, research data management. Indeed, with our public repository, we want to establish a new kind of partnership between archive centers, researchers, and the public in order not only to make research data open, available to public, open and available to public, sorry, but also to keep these data open to continuous enrichment by researchers because uh, research data are produced, they are planned to be stocked on a research repository, but uh, freezed. So uh, we want to keep these data uh, alive so that people can work on them constantly and enrich correct transcription, enrich with metadata. This is quite a task as it opposes in some way, it, it, it is opposed to in some way to a traditional archive centers approach to dissemination of their collections. Uh, up to now, archive centers have been uh, quite um, um, to uh, open their, uh, their um, websites to collect data that can change, they, they always want. Uh, uh, 
finished data to be available to public. And if we start producing huge amount of data, these data won't be finished and they, they will never be uh, closed and uh, perfect. So we have to find another way to, uh, to, to work together. Uh, although that was not planned at the beginning of uh, the project, participatory science has become a fundamental element of Digital New Friends with the integration of the Gardenat team about a year ago. Gardenat is an old French word that designed uh, a French office created in the Middle Age to keep the minute of contracts, transcription, obligation, etc., and which was lately merged into the office of notary. The integration of this component was a real bottom-up process, as it were the volunteers who expressed their interest in contributing their, exper their expertise to the current scientific research in order to further develop their skills in paleography. The Garden Art are a self-supporting organization, self-organizing uh, uh, group, structured to ensure that the paleographers can work without depending on the constant supervision of researchers. So we discussed that they were they needed to be able to work by themselves because if we were always involved in correcting and reviewing. The, the, the work they were doing, uh, we would consume more time <laughs> in supervising their work than doing our research. So um, participants are organized into work teams based on their respective experience and skills so that newcomers can be introduced to the workings of the group, the work protocols, and the challenges associated with the type of documents that the current research is addressing. This system has major benefits for volunteers. It provides paleographers with a place to practice their favorite hobby while making a tangible contribution to the advancement of research. It also provides an opportunity to network with other paleographers outside the usual circle of their local genealogical and historical societies. In the context of the pandemic, this need has been particularly acute. The team operates on the principle that uh, of pairing more or less experienced paleographer in relatively small teams, the members divide the work of layout uh, uh, segmentation of uh, documents, transcription, markup, and revision according to their respective skills and preferences also. The wide variety of files that could be handled makes it easier, uh, makes it easy to recruit members with a wide range of skills and interest. Thus, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Rather than being lost, expertise in paleography is growing around the population. Eventually, the group even hopes to offer sponsorship service for history students to help them develop their paleography still skills sorry for a study project in in collaboration with uh, uh, professors in addition because the group operates relatively independently members are able to draw on other talents to improve the group's effectiveness and increase its impact some people will project uh, with project management experience are involved in structuring the group's activities. Others more familiar with computers uh, are involved in developing the website and various tools to facilitate the work of the teams uh, and ensure the efficient flow of information at all levels, in particular to avoid unnecessary duplication of work and communication with the researchers. Uh, here you have an example of the website that they developed. And uh, here they are um, asking their uh, volunteers to uh, take uh, snapshots of the different letters that they find in the notarial archives for one specific writer. And they concentrate all the information into their, their website so all the members can go to, the website, sorry, go to the website and have the information they're looking for. Um, the, um, the the advantage of the, uh, of the benefits uh, of uh, is is uh, of participatory science. Sorry, without uh, is important to uh, researchers because without having to organize and manage workflows, uh, work planning, task allocation, review, and correction, we can uh, still use uh, citizen science. It also allows the development of highly accurate recognition model very quickly. In this regard, the current objective of the Gardenet is to prepare the data for training models adapted to the most important uh, series of uh, notarial archives of New Friends, whose registers often contains more than 2,000 pages 
sometimes around thousand, uh, ten thousands, but not more than that. So we will have to develop a lot of models and to be very uh, precise and very uh, acute. So we are starting a project to uh, find out exactly the point where uh, you reach the uh, the highest level of efficiency for uh, putting your time and uh, uh, investing yourself in developing a model, but having the more acute model without uh, going too far in investing time, money, and uh, participation. So we have uh, figured out uh, for instance, that uh, if you make small models, increasing the iterations is really not important. If, in fact, it's <laughs> worse. <laughs> so you see here that uh, after 100 or 150 epochs, you go very uh, uh, bad in your in your uh, models. Uh, the, the the most important thing is to uh, increase the number of words uh, into your data set and also uh, to have a good base model which uh, allows you with uh, very few pages to get really high scores. And also um, the last thing is um, to make a good sample of the documents into your collection, uh, to have a good variety of documents with a good lexicon that will be reproducible on your data. This can increase by twice the efficiency of a model. So uh, we hope to arrive uh, soon with uh, more precise uh, data on this. And thank you for your attention. So thank you for your very interesting talk where you've shown how to yeah, connect different stakeholders around historical documents, which is also something that the Read Cooperative is all about. Are there any questions? Anything you would like to know? Yeah. Uh, with regards to APAD, um, the permanent workshop, um, so you you had three different segments of it. The, the museum connected the um, these uh, students at the university and then the summer session, is that correct? Yeah, it's all linked together. They're all linked together. So, so if it is a student enrolled in a transcribus course during the school year and then completes the summer session and then presents their materials, they can do all three. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, uh, sorry in advance. It is not a transcribus related question at all, but I'm very interested. You mentioned that you were able to locate where some minorities in Montreal were living and you reference it. Um, how were you able to do so? Um, like do plots or houses have house numbers? Or not, because in my own experience, I know if there are no house numbers, it's very challenging to locate plots in the city. Yeah, because we had in uh, New France, it was a signal uh, system. And we have, we call, uh, we, we call it les, les Terriers de Montréal. So we know exactly where this owner has his land uh, in the city. And also we, uh, we have this uh, database unique in the world also, because one thing that I didn't tell you that in, all this project, what we are going to do is uh, uh, create a, a link between all these databases that I, we, I showed you, and we will have only one portal. So you could have, you type the name of somebody, and then up his archives will come in your, end transcription will come in your, in your uh, computer. And uh, what is fantastic with this uh, development that we're doing with the, uh, the map, the mapping, it's incredible. It's really incredible because, uh, well, I can talk to you about that uh, in more details, but uh, it's on the way. So um, to complete her answer about uh, Terrier, uh, seigneurial uh, Terrier were mapped also in 17th and 18th century. So uh, they were uh, geo-referenced. Okay. 
So uh, to understand this correctly, the the names of the landowners are connected with the parcels, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's right in the document. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Okay, then I think we need to move on to our last talk for this section. Thanks again. Wait just a second, please.